welcome seekers of the sinister and aficionados of the eerie. Brace yourselves as we embark on a journey through shadowed paths and whispered secrets. For tonight, we present six true tales that will stir your soul and keep you awake until dawn. From shadows moving of their own accord to whispers in the deafening silence, each story is a reminder of the world that lurks beyond our understanding. Prepare to feel your pulse quicken and your mind ensnared by narratives that promise to turn this night into a relentless question of your courage. Let us begin this chilling journey and ready yourself for a night you might not soon forget. This story, set in the uneasy times of 2021 during the pandemic, revolves around a group of university friends choosing to live together for remote learning in a spacious house in California. Seeking a sense of safety and community, the girls opted for an apartment at the back of the house, away from the street. Despite the house's large size and communal spaces, the lack of proper furnishing, specifically curtains or blinds, left them feeling somewhat exposed with only flimsy bug screens separating them from the outside. In the weeks leading to a particular incident, one friend, whose room faced the small parking lot, expressed growing concern over hearing footsteps and attempts to jiggle the lock or open the front door and windows. Surprisingly, the group didn't react with much alarm initially, perhaps underestimating the seriousness or attributing it to the general unease of the times. The story hints at a looming, unsettling event catalyzed by these seemingly minor but increasingly disturbing occurrences setting the stage for a revelation or confrontation that would shake their sense of security and bond them even closer in the face of shared adversity. The seemingly minor incidents of hearing footsteps and jiggling locks had given way to a temporary sense of complacency among the girls, living together in the back of a large house amidst the peculiar context of the pandemic might have contributed to a collective downplay of the potential dangers. The presence of frequent visitors, particularly at night, further muddled their perception of unusual noises, attributing them to known sources rather than potential threats. However, the atmosphere shifted during a Harry Potter movie marathon an activity meant to bring light-hearted fun into their cramped coexistence. The gathering, featuring homemade themed cupcakes and a deep dive into the magical world on a subpar TV, was interrupted by an eerie sensation of being watched, marked by unexplained giggling noises just outside their door. The initial dismissal of these sounds eventually gave way to concern as the giggling persisted, morphing from a dismissive annoyance to a sinister intrusion. With the boys stepping out to investigate and finding nothing, and the neighbors engaged in their own activities, the group tried to return to their evening, opening a kitchen window for some fresh air despite the earlier disturbances. However, the recurrence of the strange, forced giggling outside their window served as a chilling reminder that their sense of security might be more fragile than they thought, prompting a realization of vulnerability that contrasted sharply with their earlier dismissive attitude towards the ominous signs. The night turned from casual fun to absolute terror when a strange man appeared, pressing his face against the open window's bug screen, chewing on it with wide, unblinking eyes. The group's sense of safety shattered instantly. 
while the boys attempted to secure the window. The rest scattered in panic, seeking refuge in various rooms. Despite their efforts, the man lingered, his bizarre, unflinching gaze adding to the distress until he finally retreated into the darkness. After this harrowing experience, the group took immediate steps to enhance their security, installing blinds and reinforcing locks with the help of family members. While reflecting on the incident, they speculated that the man might have been under the influence. Given the proximity to a campus known for drug-related incidents, nevertheless, the encounter left a lasting impression. A vivid reminder of the vulnerability they felt and the urgent need to protect their shared living space. This story segues into a recollection of a high school adventure where the narrator, accompanied by a brother and two cousins, embarked on an ambitious hike into the expansive, uncharted wilderness behind their home. Despite their familiarity with the woods, they aimed to explore deeper, unexplored territories. Equipped with food, flashlights, and essential supplies, they ventured out, aware of the journey's length and potential challenges. As the eldest and most prepared, the narrator assumed the responsibility of navigation and carrying the bulk of the supplies, embarking on what would become a memorable, if naive, exploration into the vast unknown. In the throes of their adventurous spirit, the group, equipped with a tent, water, first aid, flashlights, food, and a single flare gun for emergencies, set out into the forest. After a day of trekking, they stumbled upon an old, towering overlook likely used in the past for spotting forest fires. As the sun began to set, they debated whether to ascend the perilous structure. Despite concerns about the staircase's stability, Lily and the narrator proceeded to climb, only for a plank to give way, causing an injury. In the ensuing chaos and concern, the group's attention was abruptly diverted by a mysterious figure near a tree at the base of the overlook. The eerie presence of this lanky figure with disheveled gray hair and tattered clothing sent a wave of fear through the group. As the figure began to approach the stairs, panic set in, prompting a hasty retreat up the tower. The fear intensified when they realized the stranger was rummaging through their belongings left at the bottom. Caught between the danger of the dilapidated staircase and the unsettling stranger below, the group faced a dire situation, their safety hanging in the balance as they grappled with their next move amidst the isolation and unpredictability of the wilderness. Trapped atop the dilapidated overlook, the group watched helplessly as the strange woman at the base of the stairs made herself comfortable with their belongings, consuming their food and taking most of their possessions. As darkness enveloped them, the reality of their vulnerable position became painfully clear. Despite contemplations of confronting the intruder, the risks, especially considering the narrator's injury and the potential danger posed by the woman, kept them immobilized. The night stretched on, filled with tension and fear, until the first light of dawn offered some relief. The figure was gone, leaving them to cautiously descend and collect whatever remained of their belongings. The journey back home was excruciatingly long and painful, especially for the narrator, burdened by the injury and the weight of the experience. Reflecting on the incident, they can 
considered the possibility that the stranger was a homeless person seeking refuge in the forest. And the mysterious inability to access the trapdoor atop the platform might have meant someone had secured it from above. Despite the ordeal and the unanswered questions, they were grateful to have made it back relatively unscathed. The experience, a stark reminder of the unpredictability and potential dangers of the wilderness, became a harrowing tale to recount underlining the importance of preparedness and caution in any adventure. Starting high school as an outcast, the narrator struggled with the social dynamics and perceived toxicity of the school environment, leading to a decision to drop out, despite the predictable resistance from parents, particularly a mother who valued education deeply. The narrator sought an alternative path an opportunity arose in the form of an alternate school, catering to a diverse group of students, including pregnant teens and those who had left traditional schooling behind. This provided a chance to earn a high school diploma in an expedited manner, appealing to the narrator's desire to move forward quickly. Upon starting at this new setting, the narrator felt isolated amidst peers with backgrounds and experiences far different from their own. However, a familiar face from the past, George, appeared, offering a semblance of connection in an otherwise alienating environment. Their reconnection was brief and took a disturbing turn when George expressed violent thoughts casually. Alarmed, and unsure how to respond, the narrator quickly excused themselves when the opportunity arose, leaving George's sinister remarks hanging ominously in the air. This encounter marked another challenging aspect of navigating a new educational path, filled with complex interactions and the continual search for belonging and understanding amidst a backdrop of personal turmoil and growth. The narrator recounts the alarming escalation of George's behavior, from morbid jokes to disturbing actions. Despite initial dismissal as teenage angst, George's activities grew more sinister, culminating in him marking a school map with a red pen, hinting at a dark plan. The uneasy memory of their parking lot conversation lingered, yet it was dismissed as George's typical attention-seeking behavior. However, the situation took a serious turn when police escorted George from the art class. The narrator's shock and dread were palpable as the reality of George's intentions began to surface. Investigations revealed alarming details on his social media and an arsenal of firearms at his home, which, while registered to his grandfather, underscored the potential for disaster. The swift action of the authorities averted what could have been a tragic incident. In the aftermath, the narrator reflects on the experience with a mix of relief and sadness. The school a sanctuary for many, was eventually closed, but not before providing a transformative journey for the narrator, who graduated as planned. The story of George, with its chilling blend of bravado and menace, remained a haunting reminder of the fragile boundaries between thought and action, and the profound impact of vigilant observation and intervention in preventing potential tragedies. The narrative shifts to a lighter memory of enjoying paintballing in the diverse and private terrains of a friend's 40-acre forest, symbolizing a return to more carefree, innocent times of youth and the resilience to move beyond past fears and uncertainties. 
As the narrator and their teammate ventured deeper into the forest, they stumbled upon an unexpected and unsettling discovery. While engaged in a paintball battle themed around Marvel versus DC comic book characters, they heard the sound of someone sobbing uncontrollably, a voice much deeper than any of their friends. The mysterious crying seemed to be coming from the South, prompting their curiosity and concern. Ignoring the fact that they were on private property far from civilization, the two friends followed the sound, their paintball guns ready, but realizing their potential ineffectiveness in a real danger situation. They eventually arrived at a decrepit, two-story brick house, which appeared to have stood since the Civil War. The sobbing had lessened in intensity, but was still audible, emanating from an upstairs window. Their friend, who owned the property, was not with them at the time, so they couldn't rely on his assistance. Despite the eerie and unsettling atmosphere of the abandoned house, their curiosity and concern drove them to investigate further. They entered cautiously through a broken front door, attempting to remain silent in an environment where the missing windows allowed the outdoor elements to creep in. The narrator and their teammate, having followed the sound of the deep and unsettling sobbing, discovered an old and decrepit two-story brick house deep in the forest. Despite the dilapidated state of the building, it was evident that the place had been used by homeless individuals for some time. It was littered with dirt, leaves, and rusty beer cans, and the atmosphere was damp and filled with an odor of pot and sweat. As they approached the base of the stairs leading to the second floor, the narrator called out, asking if the person inside was all right. However, their attempt at communication triggered a furious response from the stranger upstairs. The person charged down the stairs in a fit of rage, causing dust to fall from the ceiling. Without hesitation, the narrator and their friend retreated and rushed back out the front door into the surrounding forest. The man upstairs continued to scream and vent his rage, but did not pursue them into the woods. The narrator and their friend took positions in the trees, prepared to defend themselves if needed. The intruder eventually returned to the house, and the two friends, still shaken, marked their position before heading back to their paintball game. Upon reuniting with their friends, it was revealed that the others had encountered two intoxicated and angry homeless men during their absence. They had fired several paintball rounds in self-defense, driving their attackers away. The group quickly left the area, returned to their bikes, and called the police. It took some time for the authorities to gather enough personnel to investigate the situation fully, including using air support from a helicopter. After dark, it was discovered that at least four homeless men had been living in the abandoned house. Sadly, one of them had died, likely from an overdose. Two others had gone looking for a way to dispose of their friend's body, while the fourth man remained with the deceased, sobbing uncontrollably over the loss. The homeless individuals were arrested for trespassing. In the end, the narrator's friend's parents decided to have the small house demolished, as they were unaware of its existence on their property. This unexpected encounter served as a sobering reminder for the group of friends as they had inadvertently stumbled upon a hidden haven for individuals whose lives had taken a bleak turn. Coincidence, and the man was indeed following them. Despite the park not being extremely remote, they were in a densely wooded area with isolation possibilities. The couple, 
who weren't particularly large individuals, began to feel uneasy about the situation. The man, who appeared to be in his thirties and wore orange and gray hiking gear, continued to tail them closely, but just out of earshot. He followed them through the historic center, outdoor corridors, terraces, and lookout points. Whenever the narrator stopped briefly to look at something, the man would sit down on a nearby bench, trying to appear as a casual passerby. The couple silently noted his presence, but hoped it was just an awkward coincidence. However, when the boyfriend wandered off momentarily to read a sign about the bat population, the man seized the opportunity to approach the narrator. He walked very closely behind, just a foot away, and then stopped, seemingly sizing up the situation. The narrator watched as the man passed by, but checked behind himself briefly. When the boyfriend returned, he suggested they go to another part of the park, and the narrator agreed. As they turned around to walk to the other side of the pond, the man immediately did a 180 and started following them once again. The situation had become increasingly unsettling, and it was clear that the man's actions were deliberate. The couple needed to make a decision about how to handle the situation and ensure their safety. Out. It started a few months ago when I noticed a woman who seemed to be following me. At first, I thought it was just a strange coincidence. But as time passed, it became clear that this woman's presence in my life was more than just random encounters. My husband and I have two children, Isaac and Tiana, and we lead a relatively normal life. However, this woman's appearances have started to affect our family. She shows up at places we go, whether it's the park, the grocery store, or even school events. At first, I thought she might be a parent from Tiana's school, but I've never seen her interacting with other parents or children. I've tried talking to my husband about it, but he's dismissive, thinking it's just a coincidence or my imagination. However, I know I'm not making this up. I've seen her multiple times, and her presence makes me extremely uncomfortable. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but it's starting to feel like more than a coincidence. I'm worried about the safety of my family, especially my children. I'm not sure what to do next or how to handle this situation. I'm reaching out for advice on how to deal with this unsettling experience. Should I confront the woman if I see her again? Should I involve the authorities? I just want to protect my family and find out what's really going on. Any advice or insights would be greatly appreciated.